So let's get to the message today. A very needful message today. The message is this, do not worry. <laughs> let's get right into it. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 34. Jesus is talking and says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Amen? All right. Amen. All right. Let's go. <laughs> if my king, our king, said do not worry, does that mean we can? Let me ask you again. I'll say it differently. If our Lord Jesus told us, hey, do not worry, is that possible? Why? Is it possible? Because Jesus said so. Yes, because of him. See, without him, I would worry. But he's, even with him, many Christians worry. But he said, do not worry. So does that mean it's possible or impossible? Possible. That's what you've got to get in your head. Why? Because if you don't put that... Um, you, if you don't put that as the final decision, no, it is possible because Jesus said so, you're going to say this, hey, do not worry to, to a Christian. I will say to you, hey, do not worry. And you as a Christian, where I hear many times, will say this, I know it says do not worry, but, but what? We still have to live in this world. We still have, think, have to go through things, Andrew. Uh, thank you. I also live in this world. Thank you. I know this. We do go through things. I go through things too. It's not the point. The point is, he said, do not worry. Didn't he? Didn't he? Let's choose to believe him and then say this, God, I'm struggling with that. Teach me how to live a life that I actually can be a person that doesn't worry. Because if he can do it, because I can't do it. If he says, do not worry, that means he will do that thing inside of me that needs to be done. So I do not worry. True. That's up to him. But if I have my excuses in front of him, not allowing him to do that impossible thing, then he can't do it. Because I already said, no, 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 that's impossible. But all things are possible with God. Yeah, I know, Jesus, what you said, but we're still humans. We still have to live in this world. He knows that. He was right there in the world when he was saying that. True? If we remove the yes, but out of the way, which is true, our buts are true. It's real things. We're living this life. But if we say, wait a minute, God has given us access to a place where he's telling us we can live in a place where we don't worry. That doesn't mean we won't feel it. That doesn't mean you won't feel the worry or think the worry. It means you won't surrender to the worry and react to the worry. Because if you surrender to the worry, you will react and do actions of what the worry is making you feel like. So then you end up reacting to the worry. Amen. All right, let's go. I'm thinking this is, I don't need to keep talking. This is all we need right now. Because we need to just stand and trust him in this truth. Go, God, I've never stood my ground to this reality, but you said it and you're not a liar. Let all people that say anything different be liars, but only God be true. Any person that tries to excuse away and make reasonings and logic or whatever they want to use to say that what you said, you didn't mean. Let them be all liars. And only God be true. Because they are. Maybe not intentional ones, but they are. God is saying the truth. There was no tricks involved. There was no deep thinking about it. He's saying we can. So therefore I say, Jesus said, do not worry about your life. It's really hitting me to just to like keep looking at that. And then he adds to it, what you will eat or what you will drink. Nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they are neither sow nor reap. They don't work. Nor do they gather into barns to make sure they have enough food, you know? Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Are you not? Don't you see your worth? Are you hearing what your Lord and my Lord is saying to us? Right now, he, he doesn't have to work or store up food to have enough if things are going bad to make sure they'll be okay. I'm taking care of them, even though they don't do anything. I dress them. Which of you, by worrying, 
can add one cubit to his stature. If you have, if you have become taller because you're worried about it, you might tell me how you did that. I wouldn't mind about one or two centimeters getting a bit taller there. My wife's a little bit taller than me, so I'm like sometimes insecure, like, honey. But which of you, by worrying, has added a cubit to your stature? So worrying does what? In other words, what is he saying there? Worrying does nothing. Doesn't change a thing. Doesn't give you anything to fix anything. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies, the flowers of the field, how they grow. They neither toil, they don't work, nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, one of the richest men in the world at his time, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these flowers. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today it's here, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven and burnt. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? What's our problem? Little faith. He didn't say, oh, you that don't fast enough. Oh, you that don't know the Bible enough. Oh, you that don't pray enough. Oh, you that don't believe this. Oh, you, because faith means to trust, to believe, to have confidence in. So I'll use all of them. Oh, you that you don't have confidence in me. Oh, you that don't trust me. Or you that don't believe me. You know, we can believe in Him for salvation. We can believe God exists. But He's taking us to a place where He wants to challenge us and say, Hey, would you trust me even in this area? Would you believe me even in this area? What about that area? Would you believe me? Would you stretch yourself to the limits that you've put on yourself and me and then push yourself to believe me a little bit more this time? Not in a condemnation way. But it's a challenge way. I challenge myself all the time how far I can go. I had a toothache a while back, a few years ago. I don't know if it was that long. And I was fighting it. I was standing my ground. Do you know why I do these things? I literally hurt my ankle and it was so much in pain. And I heard another preacher that I like speaking like this. He, he walks in faith and miracles and everything. So I was grabbing my foot and I was going like this, be healed. Because he wouldn't obey me immediately. So after a week of being in pain, I was hitting it because it's being rebellious against God. You obey God. Oh! I was tormenting myself. I'm not telling you to do this. And I didn't get healed after I did that. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could have said that. And I hit it and I was healed. It didn't. I just it was hurting more <laughs> but I'm like this you know why because I want to pray for your ankle and believe for your ankle to be healed you understand I want to how I want to be the person that if you've got a headache I don't say to you come here let's pray for your headache the Lord will heal you but I'm a liar because let's say every time I have a headache I run to Panadol or whatever people use these days what do they use these days uh, Panadol still? Okay, cool. I don't know because I haven't taken this stuff in years. I don't touch Panadol. I don't touch I'm not telling you to do the same thing. I'm saying to you, if I'm going to stand and pray for you for your headache, how can I act like I have faith for your headache when I don't even have faith in my own? I don't even try to have faith in my own. Why? Because I don't stretch it myself. So, but I go as far as I can handle in my faith. I'm not stupid. Or well, maybe to some people I kind of can be. But I pushed myself, so I had this toothache, and for weeks, it was getting worse and worse and worse. I would wake up from the pain, I couldn't think, I was getting headaches from the pain, and I was rebuking, commanding, blah, 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 to get healed and declaring, I don't care if it's spiritual or physical, it doesn't matter, all things have to obey our God. Now, when I didn't have enough faith for this to get healed, it wasn't God's will, and He wasn't teaching me anything, okay, <laughs> out of this. It was me in pain, I couldn't even think to do anything else, okay? 
So I went as far as I could handle, and then I went to the dentist, go, go, grab that out, that thing, do whatever you need to, stick that needle in there, whatever you need to do. So I went as far as I could, and then I went to the dentist. Okay? But there's times where I don't, because I want to be able to stand for the people that I'm praying for with faith. I don't want to be fake in a, I don't want to be fake. I don't want to act like I have faith for your things when I don't have and have faith for them when they come on me. Okay? I'm not talking about, I repeat, I'm not talking about someone that had a headache and does pray and wait a little bit, sleeps through it till the next day, whatever, tries. I'm talking about the Christian that will uh, try to pray for me for a headache or somebody for a headache, but yet when they have a headache, in 1.2 seconds they'll run to the Panadol and immediately get a Panadol. Then I don't want you to pray for me. I don't want your unbelief on me. Don't touch me. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Do you know why I'm doing this? I'm being real so you can learn to be real with yourself. Why? Because the truth makes us free. The truth makes you free. The truth allows the Lord, and when you start making excuses, and I start making, stop making excuses, it allows God to uh, build up that faith, build up that area that's lacking. Because you're not trying to push Him away by not uh, acknowledging where you could be at. And it's okay, guys. We're all growing. We're all getting there with, with God, okay? But the only way we grow the quickest is when we are honest with God. We come honest to God and tell Him, I need help in this area or this area to grow in believing you. In this time of our life right now, it is very crucial to grow this area because I don't know what they're going to put us through. We don't know how much more of our rights and freedoms they're going to take away. I don't know how much some of us will give in to the pressure. You might not want to, but you gave into it, or you will give into it. Some of you will stop, and, and you will not. You will fight for it, and you will stand against what is evil. You won't want to get injected with those evil vaccines. But that means more resistance will come against us that don't as well. So we need to know God more than ever. We need to stretch our faith more than ever before the problem comes. I encourage you. Before the problem comes, learn to spend time with Him, to grow in your faith with Him, to challenge yourself when the opportunity comes, challenge yourself to stretch yourself a little bit. When someone needs to grow in their muscles at the gym, when I go to the gym, they have to push past what they've been able to do. So if they were doing 20 kilo weights, let's say, they went up to 20 kilo weights or 10 kilo weights on, on the arms, okay? For them to grow their muscle, they have to push their muscle to go further than what it was able to do. So they'll do one or two uh, they'll lift a couple, two more reps of 15 kilos or 12.5 kilos. Usually they did 10, but they'll do 12.5, then 10, then 12, then, sorry, then 15. And they'll keep increasing so the muscle stretches and gets shocked and then makes room for growth. Because you're telling your muscle, you're not stopping there. We're going further. So you make it hurt. Even the physical area, it hurts to begin with, but then it brings results. So when my tooth was hurting, I want to hurt because I want results after. I want to stretch myself. If I get my tooth problem again, I'm going to do it again and stretch myself further than I did last time. Until I don't need no dentist. <laughs> Let's continue. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, who was a king, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass to the f of the field, which today is here and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will He not much more clothe you or you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry. You hear how He says it again? He, did, never, says it, he never says this, which is weird, because Jesus knows, knows exactly how to say things. He's very detailed in His words. He says, He didn't say, try not to worry. He's, it's, it's a forceful Declaration, it's a forceful command. Do not worry. He says like, it's a hundred percent. This is possible. Do not worry. Look what he said not to worry about. Everyday stuff, like food, like having clothes to wear, like having something that we can be able to buy some clothes to wear. Every necessity. He wasn't talking about the extra things that we might want in life. He was talking about the necessary things we want in life. He says, do not worry about them. Do not worry. Do not worry. He repeats himself again. Do not worry. 
and we, can, we, can, we, and we can continue saying this. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For all of these things, listen to this, the Gentiles seek. Who are the Gentiles? Every time he was referring to Gentiles, well, he was talking about those who don't have me as their God. Those who don't have God the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as their God. These people, they should worry because they don't have the, the true God to take care of them. They believe in other false gods. You don't be like them. Why? Because you really believe in the true God, don't you? Don't you? Oh, uh, and then it says, For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but, no, notice, the, 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 the key is, he says, He knows what you need. What? what? That you need to eat, that you need to drink, that you need to wear something. He knows that you need all these things, and then he tells you the key. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Did he say pray for them? Did he say pray for them there? No. Did he say ask for them? No. He said, your father knows what you need. All you need to do is what? Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. Seek to know God and his kingdom. To be about what is right in his eyes. To live right in his eyes. To do what is right in his eyes. To see how he sees things. And all those other things, don't worry, they're going to be added unto you. Don't worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. They're going to be added unto you. It's a fact. Look how he even says it factual again. They're going to be added unto you. It's going to happen. That's why you don't worry. I have some friends. I'll finish this first. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Isn't it true? There's enough stuff to think about today. So stop even thinking about tomorrow, about the things. See, and that's our problem. Again, another key. Please, when I talk like this, I'm not... All I want to do is encourage you in the ways of the kingdom. If we apply the ways of the kingdom and challenge ourselves to apply, to do the ways of the kingdom now, even if we didn't do them before, even if we did some areas before, but we haven't done these areas, encourage yourself to do this. Challenge yourself to do these areas as well. And you will see God take care of you, especially in this time. Stop focusing on tomorrow, especially if you can't change it. I'm focusing meaning this in a worrying way. I'm not saying... Uh, if you have bills to pay, you know that you have bills to pay by the end of the month. That's worrying about tomorrow. The point he says is, he doesn't say don't think about tomorrow, he says don't worry about it. Very different. So start to look at what you need to do and then practice not worrying. So deal with the situation. Whatever you can do to fix the bill payment that you need to do or to do whatever you need to do, right? If the, whatever you, you can do, it's in your power to do, do it. Write down what you need to put aside who you need to pay off, what you need to do, how much jobs you need to do more so you can be able to make that payment. Write it, but learn not to do it in worry. And then I've got to do this, and then I have to do that. No, hey, stop it. It's ruining you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm recording this. Go back to the recording when I finish this and look up this woman called Dr. Caroline Leaf. I think over 25 years now, over 30 it would be now, that she's been, a, it's all about the, the brain. And massive studies on the brain. She's one of the leading people about the brain, right? Christian, full on, on fire, Jesus lover. So she always brings scripture to the things she says. That's why I'm encouraging you to look at her. And she talks about how they call magic trees, they call the nerves in the brain. And how they can actually turn black or very strong like a red pinky color because it's very healthy and they've noticed that the reason why these different trees they call them magic trees that grow and new ones can be formed and new ones can die and new ones come up is they learned that someone's a positive thinker it becomes really uh, healthy looking vibrant red pinkish color in their brains and if it's a negative person it literally becomes a dark black color these trees Caroline Leaf, Dr. Caroline Leaf. The one to look for is this, 
how to rewire your brain. That's what it's called, how to rewire your brain. She said this through scientific studies more and more because no one, the, the, the brain was only just, like I said, 20 years now, 25 years, whatever it's been, they've been actually studying the brain. Before that, there was hardly nothing being done to study what, how the brain works, what happens to the brain if you do this and all that. So she's been very much involved in these scientific studies. And this is the conclusion from the scientists. 83 to 97%, or some say 85 to 97% of all illness that result in hospital stays are caused by focusing on negative thinking. Did you hear that? This is scientific fact. Hosp people going to hospital for illnesses to do with, uh, like from, from uh, emotional, I wrote it somewhere else. From emotional, actually I wrote it here, one second. I'll, I'll tell you exactly, because I forgot to put it on the paper. Okay, from all mental, physical, and emotional illness come from thought life. Listen to this again. It's uh, 83, some say 85, some say 87%, to 95% of all mental, physical, and emotional illnesses come from our thought life. People going to hospital, doctors, we're all stuck in this stuff. Why? They're thinking. And God says what? What were we just reading? Do not worry. Is worry a, 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 a positive thinking or a negative thinking? Negative thinking. Is God okay with worrying? Why is he saying this to his children? Do not worry. Do not worry. Because he cares about us. And he wasn't just about just telling us, hey, stop worrying. He's trying to save us from getting illnesses. Why? Because he knows deeper, scientifically, later, these humans are going to find out that even that I was trying to help them, but they're not ready for me to explain scientifically what's going on in their nerves and stuff. So he just says, do not worry. So worrying is a enemy. Worry is a Do you know why you look at it as an enemy? Because Jesus said this, the thief comes not, but what to do what? To steal, to kill, to destroy. Worry does what? It steal, kills, and destroys. Steals your health, kills. There's many people that have died. If not from their worrying and all that stuff that's going on mentally and the thought process, the pills that the doctors give them from psychiatrists kills them. Side effect after side effect and more pills after more pills after more pills and the guy's a zombie and inflated because they're taking these pills usually because the body can't handle what's going into their system so it inflates. Yeah, it's protecting for yeah, but it's for scorny, like it's blowing up because he can't handle it. It's doing the last thing he can do. <laughs> Note, I wrote this before, I already said it, but I'll say it again. No, this doesn't mean you won't think or feel fearful feelings or not have worrying or fearful thoughts. It just means that you will not tolerate for those thoughts and feelings to have you by focusing and entertaining them for too long. I'll say that again. This doesn't mean you won't think, you won't have thoughts or feelings that are fearful. And you won't have thoughts or feelings that are worryful. It just means that you will not, you will start to have a mentality where I'm not going to tolerate this worry that's coming right now on me. This fear, I'm not tolerating it because I'm not going to let my body be damaged or getting ill. God says, I don't have to worry. I'm not going to worry. Let me deal with the situation. So how, God, give me your wisdom and you stop. Because you, I'm telling you, if you learn to catch yourself when you're worrying, what you will do is you won't just stop worrying. You will go to the one who helps you not worry. And then you're going to deal with the situation that you have to deal with the real things for life that we have to deal with, but you will do it with him. Because he, can, he just told you, you can. You can live a life where you do not worry. How? If you abide in me and I in you. Worry comes when you come out of him. Hey, <gasps> anxious, worry. Hey, abide in me and you will bear much fruit. Do this with me. Don't come out of the bubble of my love. Don't come out from living in me. Because we can. That doesn't mean you're not saved. It means we went into the flesh instead of into the spirit. Even though we live in the Spirit, let's also walk in the Spirit. 
If we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. What's one of the desires of the flesh? If the desires of the Spirit is peace, what's in the flesh? No peace. If one of the desires or the things of the flesh is fear, then what's in the Spirit? Love. That casts out all fear. This is, we, we are in training. And the only one that can train you is you. You've got to start practicing what you just learned. And that takes time. Like I say this, we want McDonald's Christianity. Fix it, boom, like this. If God wants to train you to learn that if anything comes out to you again, you've been trained well now, because life is life. You might be going well now this month, this year. I don't know, this week. But then out of the blue, something comes your way that you did not expect. It came out of nowhere. You didn't know. But you've been training yourself so much in living in the Spirit. And when you saw worry, you've learned to go, no, I'll cast that worry down. I don't have to tolerate living in worry. I can deal with my stuff without worry. God, I stand with you now. Let me deal with it with you. Now you're training. So when the thing comes again, you deal with it the same way. Um, I'll read this one more time. And then we move to the next bit. This doesn't mean you won't think or feel fearful feelings or not have worrying or fearful thoughts. It just means that you will not tolerate for those thoughts and feelings to have you. How? By how do they have you? Because you're focusing and entertaining them for too long. That's how they have you. You start focusing, you start thinking on them. And then they consume you and everything about you, everything you're thinking about. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Did you hear that? I say this a lot, and we need to keep hearing it. I need to keep hearing it. We need to repeat this stuff. But listen again. How? Listen to how he speaks. This is what gets me. He never leaves room for, ah, maybe, eh, sometimes. Listen to him. He always, in Word of God, when he talks about this subject, it's always, boom. This is it. There is no exit plan. There is no plan B. There is no, this is it. And if you don't, if you don't accept this, you will fall into that. He says, for God has not, has not given us a spirit of fear. So when we are getting fear, who is giving it to us? Is it God? No. Is it a spirit? God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He calls it a spirit. This spirit loves attacking us. But he gave us a spirit of what? Of power, of love, and a sound mind. My mind's not going, oh, 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 oh. it's a sound mind. It's a peaceful mind. It's a calm mind. When your mind's not calm, this is how you check yourself. If you're not calm about things, then are you in the flesh or are you in the spirit? In the flesh. Are you in the spirit of fear or are you in the spirit of God? Spirit of fear. You see what happened? Now again, I'm not telling you this so you can go, oh no. It's for you to go, aha. So now you can practice to know what to do whenever you feel the spirit of fear and whenever you know that you're on the spirit of God. Because you know the fruits. This is the time, this, especially these times where we're in now, is an opportunity to flourish in our faith. What does flourish mean? Grow. Fly in learning how to have faith. Jump out of the nest and go, yeah, I want to try it. You know, like a little bird for the first time he tries to fly. Or even better, I'm going to have a little child, son, soon. All of you were children at one stage, I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, something, anyway. When you were walking, or I'll forget you because you won't remember. When you saw your little brother, little sister, your, your son, your daughter, whatever, your cousin, when they're trying to walk, they're trying, right? They stop from being uh, at a place where they just sit back and mommy does everything for them and daddy does everything. Now they're starting to push themselves to grow in a, into an areas that they haven't tried before. But for them to stop staying the same and growing in this area, they try. So the parents know that they have to go, come on. And they walk with them like this and then they let them go and the baby goes like this and poof, falls on the ground. What happens next? It's okay, come on, get up, blah, blah, blah. And you teach them, and you keep going, and you keep going until they're able to walk. Then they run, then they break things, then they run, and you've got to chase after them. Anyway, 
But this is how they grow. They challenge. You challenge them to grow. You, you in a sense, in a, in a lovely way, you push them to achieve something they weren't able to do before because you know what they're capable of. They're capable of walking. They're capable of going to the toilet in time. You teach them this stuff. But you start teaching them towards that area, even if they fail a few times. You understand? You don't give up. In the same way, this is the time to flourish in your faith. If you tried praying for somebody and you didn't see what happened and you gave up from praying for people, you get up and start pushing yourself like never before. If you had some pain or whatever, stretch yourself as far as you can go with that pain by believing God that you'll wake up the next day and you'll be fine. Just try, challenge yourself one day. If it's not so serious like a headache or something. Try it. Push yourself and see. It's a great time. Why? Because God needs to cause you to learn to stretch yourself and flourish in faith at this time where there's opportunity for it. Why? Because people are going to need us more and more. And they're going to need to see real faith, not talking faith. Blah, 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 blah. Quoting scripture, but the scripture is not manifesting because it's not, they don't believe the scripture to unfold. 1 Peter says this, chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Isn't that amazing? What is he saying there? No matter what happens, no one can touch what's been reserved for me. No one can touch what's there reserved for me. No one. That's amazing. So that's a living hope. That's a lively hope. So no matter what they do, this is what he's trying to say here. No matter what happens here on earth, no one can touch where I'm heading. Unless I stop heading there, you know, by choosing to walk away from God. But no one can touch this. This is what you hold on to. They can kill our bodies. It says it in the Bible. Don't be afraid of the one that kills your body and then after that he has no power to do anything else. Fear the one that after you're dead has the power to throw you into hell. I tell you, fear him, it says in the Bible. Not because he wants to throw you into hell, by the way. He's saying, these guys are powerless. These guys have only power to hurt our bodies up to a specific moment, specific point, and that's it. That's it. We have given ourselves to the one who is more powerful, that the breath of every man is in his hands. We have a lively hope that no one can take away. And that's what is encouraging us to put our hope in, to put our, 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 the reason we live is not because we want everything to be amazing here. And so there's times there will be. You'll have a great business, a great job, a great wife, a great husband. Some things will go great at times. But it's not all about here because Jesus is building your mansion. In heaven, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. He says, don't store up your treasures here on earth where moth can destroy. But store up your treasures in heaven. He wants you to be mind, heaven-minded. People say, don't be so heavenly-minded, you're not earthly good. What are you talking about? Jesus literally tells us to be earthly mind, so he heavenly-minded, we are earthly good. You understand? Because your hope is for what you're gonna, where you're going to be. It's for your king, the one you haven't seen, but you believe. The reason you live. And if things are great, praise God. If things are not so good at times, praise God. Even Paul said there was times I had much, sometimes I had nothing. Sometimes I was shipwrecked. I counted all those. Oh, Lord, I love you. He praises God over everything. What an example. But no one can touch what's waiting for you guys. No one. Seriously, I keep saying this to people. You ask, my grandma is 90 something, I lost count. If you hear her stories, she'll say, it just felt like yesterday. It just felt like yesterday. This, this time that we have, it's just gonna go so quickly, guys. And we're gonna go into eternity. You're gonna enjoy life. If you always wanted to start a restaurant, start one in heaven. Life doesn't stop there. It continues on. There's no corruption there, though. There's much more colors, taste, and everything. So you make a mana mumana mulagi mix with pikla. No, I'm kidding. I don't know what there would be, but you can't out 
God wasn't shocked. In fact, one of his favorite things, because he loved, you know how, how they cook suvla and suvlaki, and you would drive around, especially on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and you smell that smell of the, of the meat. Do you know what that smell is? It's the smell of the fat of the meat. And God always said, the fatness is mine. Burn the fat, the fat offering. He loved the smell of the fat burning meat of the meat. He loves suvla. God is Cypriot. No, I'm just kidding. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying he's involved in this stuff. Do you think he's like, um, you know, the food that they have there, I can't create it on earth, in heaven. Really? He's the one who created everything else. It doesn't have to be dead meat, by the way. It doesn't have to be dead uh, animals. Can he make it still taste like suvla without killing an animal? In heaven? Ah, oh, now that gotcha. Because you were thinking, no, nah, I don't think. Because you get all theological by some dudes that are legalistic. Oh, you know, that God wouldn't bring death. No one spoke about death, dude. Stop putting God in a box. God can make suvla, suvlaki, kotopulon, chicken, marinated, mate. And there's no chicken dead. The chicken's like, what are you eating? Chicken. And the chicken's talking to you. Hey, the serpent was talking in the garden. Did you hear that? The serpent was talking in the garden. And you know what's shocking? When Eve heard the serpent talking, he says, she didn't go, ah! Serpent's talking. She didn't do that. Why? Because it was normal for animals to talk. Did you ever think of that? Back then. That's why she wasn't shocked. That's why she was just talking back to it. The Lord did say not to eat of this tree. Did he say, and then having a conversation. Nowhere is the word, ah, there, from freaking out because a snake is talking to her. Did you know that animals have all the vocal cords to be able to speak, but no one knows why they can't speak? Ooh. Maybe God didn't want to open the mouth of, he already opened the mouth of a donkey in the Bible one time. But maybe he doesn't want to have all the animals talking and all that stuff because they'll also say stupid stuff like humans do. <laughs> against God you know what I mean like look enough with humans they blame me they you know, wake up they don't even believe I exist they blame me for the wrong things that happen I'm gonna have animals going you know I would try eating that lion and the lion got away from me I, he doesn't it's your fault God okay five let me go back blessed be the God of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ amen who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's how he got us back. To an inheritance. He didn't just get us back. He also gave us an inheritance which is incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice. In this, you greatly rejoice. Next bit, ready? Even though now, for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Even though now, here on earth, at this time, maybe you're having trouble, you're being grieved, you're being sad by trials that are happening. What do you do? Just remember what's waiting for you. That's what he's telling you there. Let this be your lively hope. That you look back going, yep, you can take everything, government, you devil using the government, whatever, whatever. You can do everything you do. You cannot touch what is kept in heaven for me because of my Lord. Undeviled in inheritance waiting for me. A mansion. You can't take that house. <laughs> you see the difference? So you still rejoice. That's what he's telling us there. He's giving us a hint to the mindset we should have through times that are trials and difficulties. The genuineness of your faith or the testing, listen to this, the reason why the New King James used genuineness and the King James uses uh, testing or trial of your faith, I'll finish the verse, is because it causes you to have a genuine faith. Through trials, when you learn to use it as an opportunity to flourish, to grow in your faith, it will become genuine, your faith. You understand? 
So that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes through though it's tested by fire that our faith is tested even by fire so much bad things are happening may be found praise to praise honor to glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ when we see Jesus our faith was to be wow bravo well done Andrew you remain you trusted me through this even through fire even through difficulty and it tells us how keep your eyes on me and know that no one can take what's waiting for you that I've created that I have for you in heaven even if they take everything on earth though now you do not see him ah, whom whom having not seen you love amen who we don't see we might see him in a spirit at times or a dream different things but I don't see him here physically I love though now you do not see him you believe you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory receiving at the end of your faith the salvation of your souls salvation also means the deliverance of your souls you've been delivered from what the things that Satan tried to take from you and do to you and make you feel like finish with this Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 8 ready Listen to his language again, how strong it is, meaning there is, no, uh, there is no room for year but, there is no room for some time. Listen to the word again. Be anxious for nothing. How much? Nothing. Isn't that amazing? Let me ask you a question. If he said, be anxious for nothing, is that possible? Yes. yes. That's what you've got to do in your mind. You've got to go, wait a minute. I'm never going to say any more again. Yeah, no, but why? Because you've come into an inheritance with Jesus that the impossible can become possible with God. Because it is impossible. What do you mean be anxious for nothing, God? Things are happening. Real things. Uh, yeah, I see it. Be anxious for nothing. Why? Because with me, all things are possible. All things are possible for those who what? Believe, he says. All things are possible for who? For every believer? For every, I'll say it like this. All things are possible for all the Christians? No. It's for those who believe that all things are possible. That's the point. That's why many are still bound. The Christians, they have an inheritance. They won't challenge and, and fight for it in the sense of in their mind. They go, no, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to be okay with being fearful, anxious. No. They won't. They'll say, ah, this is normal life. What are you talking about? We're only human. You've been born again. A new creation in Christ Jesus. You are not only human. That's the point. So you challenge yourself. Why am I saying that? I'm not going to say that anymore. Because I've been born again. My Lord said I'm a new creation. So I'm going to take on the inheritance that comes with that creation. New creation. The ability to have emotions that I could not have if I wasn't in a new creation. Because now I am one spirit with the Lord. Because whoever has joined themselves with the Lord has become one spirit with Him. So if I walk in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust, the desires, the anxiousness, the fears that come in the flesh. Because I have access to come and do this in the Spirit. Now if you don't believe that, if you've never been taught that, then you won't practice it. But you are being taught this. You have been told this. This is all scriptural, the things that I've said, in context. But it's up to us individually to practice this how much every day take up your cross deny yourself the self that is the flesh that tells you don't believe that and follow me this is how we grow we might have a bad day and didn't do it too well that tomorrow maybe you'll be anxious again tomorrow but the day after that you go oh. you maybe you'll be anxious for half the day because something happened a phone call came to you and you got anxious or worried and then out of the blue you went wait a minute no, because the Spirit of God will bring you to remembrance this truth, the scriptures, his words, the teaching you heard which from him. And you'll be like, yeah, actually, that's true. And you start challenging yourself. This is you now in training. No one can take your hand. A bird, mother bird, after the baby bird starts growing and learning to fly, you don't see the mother birds holding the other birds, the, the child bird's wings and helping it fly. 
It flies now. It's learned to do it. But it had to practice by itself. It was individual thing that everyone needed to do. She taught him, the mother taught him what she could. And now you got to practice it because you can. Our Lord, He loves you. He's fully in you by His Spirit. You lack nothing. You just need to believe and practice what you believe. And in time, it becomes normal. It becomes the way, the truth, the life. And when you see Jesus, when we see him, he says, we shall be like him because we are as he is in this world, the Bible says. You've learned to walk in his reality. You're walking around like how he is. You're not him. You're walking around like how he thinks, how he is, what he said the truth is. And more of us woke up to that truth because we practiced it until it became the truth, the way, the life, Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8 said this. I started already, but it says, Be anxious for? How much? All right. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Did you hear how he wants you to deal with it? There's something wrong. It's real. Something's going on. Okay, cool. Stop being anxious about it, but do give it to God. Tell your request to God what you would like. And, but it says something, ingredients with it. It says, with thanksgiving. Because you know, if your dad, you told your dad, he heard you. He'll take care of it. Thank you, dad. Stop being anxious about it. Stop thinking about it. Stop focusing on it. And the peace of God, when you do this, it has a promise. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace that you would feel when you put this and apply this surpasses any sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense how you can be in so much peace when you should be in so much anxiousness and fear. Did you hear what he just said there? Look at the context. Be anxious for nothing. Because if you do what I just told you, give it to me or your worry. Give it to me your prayer, what you need, your request. And then with thanksgiving... And the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, it doesn't make sense. You can't make sense of it. Will engulf you, will surpass you. It will guard your heart. Remember, it says guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. Satan wants your heart to be messed up because of your thinking and your anxiousness and your worry. That it produces death, produces fear, worry, produces illness in your body. With all understanding, which will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I'm going to say that last bit again. And what we're going to do is we're going to finish off with that. With you that are watching... I might play the song anyway, but play a song and actually uh, do this. Do it now while it's fresh and it will help you. But what I want you to do is, do, we're going to do this. We're gonna, you're going to meditate on this area. Finally, my brothers and sisters, I like adding, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, think of Think on these things. Meditate on these things. So I want you right now to spend some time, close your eyes as one song we play in the background, and I want you to just focus on these good things. First, apply this scripture. What's the, the bit? It says, uh, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Do that first. So when the music's playing, whatever's gone on in your heart, whatever's bothering you, I want you to give it to God without anxiousness. And just thank Him that it's going to be okay. Thank Him that you know He heard you and you'll get through it. He'll take care of it or He'll give you the strength to get around it or go through it or whatever it needs to happen. You understand? And you let it be. And then in peace you relax and start thinking of what's good. Think of your daughter. Think of your son. Think of the, that you have a house to live in. Think that you were able to come today and there's air conditioners and we're not so hot like the other place area you know just just think of what is good and just thank you lord i love you lord don't ask anything 
Don't beg him for stuff. Just love on him. Adore him. Thank him. And think on the good that he has put into your life. Okay? Amen? Amen. Let's do that right now. I'm going to play the song. And just get into a place where you're just comfortable. And please try to focus. I know in your mind you're going to start thinking of different things like the milk you need to get. Oh, your husband's waiting to get food. Uh, da, 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 da. Stop it. It'll come. Grab the thought, push it aside and say, wait a minute, I can think of it later. I'm going to give my whole thinking right now, my whole heart to my Lord and focus. It'll come again. Another thought, put it aside. That's why it says take every thought captive, capture it. You can do that. So take the opportunity to practice taking thoughts captive and then again focus. And then another thought to distract you, take it, put it aside and Lord, I love you. And just keep doing that, okay? And relaxing, resting, relax and rest, okay? And then be with God. Adore Him. Love on Him. Okay? Amen? We're going to do it now.